This time we have a much worse looking BMW on the ramp. Behold, look, look at some of the finer points of this marble. Beautiful car. Put my finger through there. Nice big dent there. Most of it's missing here. And that, this is what we usually have to deal with because the customer's obviously not actually using this shell. This is. You say this obviously, is obviously, but it's E36. All right. Wow. <laughs> Drift back. It's not a drift car though, is it? <laughs> but you, yeah, you say all that and then you come to some uh, very expensive parts just here and here and here and here and think, mm, so there's something a bit wrong here. And that is because we are building all the parts on this shell and then he's going to transfer it over to a mint shell that he has. We weren't trusted with the mint shell. We're not trusted with the mint shell, which quite rightly so as well because we are just cutting and grinding and making stuff and and doing the bits and pieces. This is actually the, the, the best way to do it. We would prefer to work on stuff like this. It's not quite as nice to look at, but it actually, it, it makes our life a lot easier. We did a lot of work. This is another BMW we're coming back to. We're revisiting it. It did come to us uh, a little while ago. Um, with we, The customer wanted us to put a turbo on this M50 engine. The turbo sat right down there. Somewhere. So you're on the bottom mount turbo, can you see it? Kinda. Kinda, get it? I think it's a G30 900. If you go up in the air, you can go see it. We'll go up in the air in a minute, Jim. Patience, dear boy. Uh, so Jim did all the work on this car to come up uh, in the first place. <coughs> Made the manifold. And I was sceptical as to whether we could make a manifold that would fit as well as this, but Jim said, no, no the face of optimism he was that day and decided that he was going to put his all into it and that's what we like from <laughs> <laughs> from my employees exactly that attitude it's yeah. very rare it hasn't happened since and i don't think it's going to happen again yeah there's a lot of profanity in that <laughs> so uh what we're we doing now we are it's come back for a few more finishing touches we are going to install that correctly uh, just by putting some brackets underneath so it's held up and not held up purely by these rubbers and there's just some general tidying up and bits and pieces to do just as a continuation and so you can get to the next step and then I imagine he'll go away and then it will come back and we'll do another step and another step and another step. It's a very loud aircraft over the top. It's crashing. <laughs> well hopefully it's far enough away. Um, boost pipe. We're making a boost pipe, which is going to go from there to there. That's that in <coughs> plenum is actually off a S. This is an M50, isn't it? That's an M50, M50 engine. Yeah, an S54 plenum. It's got S54 throttle bodies on it. We've got vacuum thing. lines and all sorts of bits and pieces. Tidying. Lots of tiny li lo those little brackets. Uh, annoying tiny little jobs that you do when you're when you're building a car. So we'll film a few of those. A few of the intricacies, the bits that people normally overlook when building a, a vehicle are we're gonna do some of them whilst the car's here. I'm putting that on there like that. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, to clear the oil cooler on that. Yeah, oil cool is like here. When it's on the car, you'll see it, but yeah, it's about there. And then, yeah, that will then swoop up into the plenum that's around there somewhere, which we just finalise in positions with the customer, and then I can then build the rest of it. Um, yeah, then the silicon on here, yeah. or, or maybe more, and then, then yeah, the short, yeah, short silicon there, and then it's got a, um, like a wigging style clamp on on the inlet plenum, which is four inch, so it goes from three inch to four inch. Uh, yeah, clean it up, weld that on, stick it on there with some glue. <laughs> any downside is it's already a weld there, isn't it? Yeah, there is, but I think you, if you cut any more back, you'd risk putting more swarf and stuff inside, which is um, can't very, find it very hard to get out. Yeah, it's hard to get out, especially when it's had some sort of spray in there or something. It's Whatever it's, it's a bit tacky, which is annoying because it means all the swarf is sticking to it. But you just have to do what you can to stop 
all swarf getting in there, so. Something along the lines of that. Okay. Right, so we'll mount the plenum, which we're just waiting back for some details from the customer, and then we can carry on that. So, got a couple of other little bits we need to do. Is um, we need to blank off. We'll go down to the car. So we need to blank this off. Um, a few other little bits and pieces and then the wiring and stuff as well, we've got to make some brackets for just to hold it off out the way, sort of touch and beams. A few little clips to hold hold connectors and little bits and pieces like that. All the little bits and pieces that no one thinks about it. You know, fit one of these nice new newish turbo smart uh, vacuum manifolds which I think you said you were going to put down here-ish yeah so there we got a there'll be a bracket that comes off of off of here and then holds the plenum up and then on that bracket we're then going to mount that so it comes off with it kind of thing if you need to yeah so because this car's got throttle bodies the vacuum has to be taken from behind the throttle body, which is, I think this balance bar has to do with equaling, well, I don't know anything about it really, but um, normally you'd have to take the vacuum from the inlet plenum, yeah. but that would be post throttle body, whereas it's pre throttle body on this setup. Um, so the vacuum comes off of here, so we'll to probably take a feed from here, as it's got no pedal box, well it's got a pedal box, but no servo, and then blank this off. I don't know what under here is. Oh, that's connection. Yeah, that's connection to each one. It's got like a little, little bit of pipe between each throttle body. Yeah. So yeah, because it doesn't need that, we'll cut that off, blank it off, and then we'll use this one. It goes down there and then it'll go down underneath. Uh, so you can do that now. Yeah, do that. Do that now. Yeah, one modified uh, vacuum bar. Dash free fitting here and uh, the blank here. The blank, Jim's done, uh, Jim, just tell me about this bit, sorry. Why you done? Oh, the blank, yeah, that? so the re reason why, well, there's a, there's a round hole where the, um, where the old fitting used to be. Uh, cut that off, ground it back. Uh, this is only 0.7 thick, um, the material thickness. So, um, if you was to weld a patch on one side of it, then, the, the heat from the weld would make it would make it bow and warp. So what we do is is we put a patch all the way around it and weld all the way around it to um, to stop it bowing basically. So the shrinkage happens a little bit that way rather than just in one side and make it bow, which means they don't line up. So we've done that. We have one mounted plenum here. And um, a boost pipe. We also have a boost pipe. Nice and neat root in there. Um, well, that's all we've done actually. <laughs> We're going to weld it up now, I think, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, blow off valve. Where's the blow off valve going? Ah, uh, blow off valve. Marked it out already. 
Probably a turbo a smart race port. Keep going there. Okay. So, nice and neat there. Yep. And also got sensor. Oh, IT sensor going, yeah. Yeah, IT sensor. That'll be going in the plenum underneath, out the way, because um, it's individual throttle bodies and it's not made of heat soap because it's got the silicons on it. Uh, oh, and the brackets called the plenum, don't we? Yeah, you, see them, you might be able to see them. Let's get out of the way. It's a bit dark. Those bits. Let's see when the plenum's off, actually. Yeah. Oh, good trip, mate. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that's it. We'll get the old the I'll have to, Yeah, I'll we'll cut the whole of the valve out, weld her up, and then put it back together. Put it back together. <laughs> So we're now the welded that boss on the bottom. The R T, <coughs> the most two bosses are welded on for the track. Carefully reposition it on the vehicle. You got your phone on you? Yeah. I need the uh, front forward facing camera so I can see what I'm doing. I haven't got my phone on me. Top tip. Come on, show. Forward facing camera so you can see. <laughs> see underneath me. I did that in the 1920s and used a mirror. Yep. Very expensive mirror. Really? Young Jim has finished his job on this car. The plenum is mounted nice and securely, doesn't wiggle at all. We did the boost pipes after that was mounted. We just modified the fuel rail around here. I'm sure all of this is in the video, I'm just summarising it up for you. And it, it looks absolutely fantastic and shiny. I'm sure, as I'm sure you'll agree. And some of the things I like the most are bits that you can't even see fiddly little bits and pieces like Jim's little bracket he made for the plugs I'm just going to show you a close up of that probably about now and then this little bracket here this is nice look it just clips in and out hand fabricate that bit, but lovely bit of kit that satisfying clunk satisfying click and uh, uh, yeah, all these things take ages to do um, but this customer particular customer likes his cars to be perfect I mean it doesn't actually look perfect at the minute because of the shell that's in but when the job's all finished and it is in the correct shell <laughs> and all the fixings and fittings are in place uh, this thing will look fantastic I think we did we did some modifications to this as well didn't we so that yeah, is we'll also that. modified we've got some dash fittings for the coolant line brackets as well so we've got for a casing this is the one with the actual engine obviously just one well down there nice little extended fitting which sits behind the, oh, the oh, filter housing oh, filter there. housing yeah uh, and that one goes around the back of the back of the head so there all fiddly annoying little jobs little fabrication jobs that are very difficult to do if you're at home in your garage. 
but for someone like Jim, who likes messing around with cars and being very finickety and fiddly <laughs> when the customer wants exactly what the customer wants, we can do it. Still filming. No burnout. Just no burnout. <laughs> There's no burnout. Just, just stand, oh, I, stand I here forgot. and smile. Like. Stand in and smile like the end of the. Uh, you know, like the guy that stands for a little bit too long. That keeps the camera on for a little bit too long at the end of the yeah. news when yeah. he's doing like yeah. a. And he picks his nose. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Says something inappropriate. There. Oh, that's not good. Enough. Right. <laughs> Whilst you're still filming the camera, let's have a look. It, this is this is what we did last time I was here. This manifold, it actually wraps around the head here. You can see it's sort of curved like this because there is literally no room in there whatsoever to get a proper manifold in. Emphasis on proper. Yeah, Jim managed to get a proper manifold. The proper collector, a proper merge collector, that is the most important part of making reliable power from a vehicle and having reliable control, obviously with our uniquely designed wastegate port on our billet collector on this one. As you can imagine, this is gonna get very, very hot next to the head. So we thought that it is about to go to Imico to have its full heat shielding placed over the top of that. And that should, will, not should, will negate any heat issues that we're gonna have with this manifold. Ooh, shiny. Have you, recovered, have you recovered from the trauma of making that yet? It was a little while ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, about <laughs> seven months maybe? Yeah, maybe. It was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, that was a um, very hard manifold to make. Tears. Yeah. You had loads of fun doing that. Yeah. And this is the downpipe, which is also uh, equally as fun to make with a plumback as well. That's going to Imico as well to be coated, I believe so. Well, I think so. Yeah. TBC. Well, that's that, all wrapped up. Yeah. Another job out the door.